Yo, what's poppin' you guys? Sizzle here, and today I'm giving you a beginner's guide to Team Fortress 2. And, uh, this isn't the definitive guide in any way, shape, or form. This is just how I personally would go about it if I started playing the game today. But obviously, feel free to look up other guides or just do anything in your own way. Or if you don't agree with something I'm doing in this video, you don't have to do it. I'm not forcing you. Uh, I don't think anything in this guide is technically essential to learning the game. You can obviously learn it all your own way. This is just the way that I think would be best for people to go about starting to play the game. So, first things first, before you even start anything, you want to change some of the settings. Uh, TF2 is almost 14 years old now. So, a lot of the settings uh, are really outdated, and they haven't been updated in a while. Generally, uh, surprisingly, most of the controls are pretty good by default, but if you want to change any of these, you want to do that, obviously, uh, under this little gear thing for the options tab. And uh, while you're here, you can also go to the mouse tab, change your sensitivity, but I'd recommend doing this in-game so you can actually see what your sensitivity does. But you do want to enable a raw input, which reads the mouse movement directly from your mouse, so that your system can't fuck with it in any way. It just basically makes your movements more precise. Uh, under audio, this is all personal stuff. It, it really up to you. Uh, generally, the defaults are pretty solid, but I turn off music because I listen to my own music, and I have it really low because this game is really loud for me. I'm not sure if it's like that for everyone, but that's how I have it now. Uh, video settings, you actually want to run this in full screen unless you have a reason to run this in windowed because just like any other game, literally any other game, running in full screen is always faster. It uh, keep, gives you lower input delay and stuff. It's just generally a better way to play. I run in windowed though because I have two monitors and I often do tab out of this game. So I don't want it to like kind of disappear every time I tab out. So that's why I run this in window, and I actually run this in borderless window, which there's like a lot of Steam guides on how to do that, since it's not officially supported. Um, under voice, you kind of just want to leave everything. And then on multiplayer, uh, you can change your crosshair here to one of the default ones they have. You can also make your own crosshair, and there's a bunch of YouTube guides on that. I'm not going over that in this video, but just know that's an option if you don't like some of the default crosshairs. And you can also import a spray. Which generally I recommend just importing a JPG, but you can um, import some animated sprays. Like this is actually Kirby bopping his head to music, but she uses a VTF file or one of these other, maybe, I don't know what the other files actually would be. Um, but you can use that to do animated sprays. If you want to do that, look up another YouTube video because that will go over that, but that's not really essential to playing the game, so I'm not going to go over it. And then you have a bit of an advanced tab here which actually is the same as the main advanced tab. But before you hop out of this, go back to the keyboard section, hit advanced, and switch both of these on. So what fast weapon switch does is it makes it so you can swap your weapons using the scroll wheel instead of just the numbers, which is obviously really nice, and I think should be enabled by default. And then enable developer console lets you put in console commands, which can be used to further alter your game settings, or if you're in an, like a single player server like offline, you can use it to mess around in that server. And generally the console is just kind of nice to look at. There's a lot of, lot of useful info and lots of useful things you can do with it. There's no reason not to have it enabled. It doesn't even show up unless you press the console button, which you should see in here somewhere. Yep, toggle developer console all the way at the bottom. Uh, generally that's set to tilde, which is the top left of your keyboard for most people, right under escape. <laughs> and when you press that button, having this enabled, it'll pop up something like this. Um, and that's not useful for now. And then second off, I'd go to advanced options. You can look through everything in here and pick whatever you want. Most of this you won't have to change, but the thing I recommend going to is miscellaneous options and then use minimize view models. I'll actually show you why this is real quick. So I'm gonna go hop in an offline game. Um, because what minimize view models does is it makes it so your weapons don't take as a, uh, take up more of your screen than they have to. So you can see if I, you know, if I have like this flamethrower out or this thing, it only takes up like a really small portion uh, in the bottom of my screen, or like the shotgun for example. Only a really small portion of the bottom of my screen. Uh, if I go to advanced options, 
and then miscellaneous, and I turn that off, you can see now this takes up almost like like a, a fourth of my screen. I know it's a bit of an exaggeration, but this, like this, literally takes up the whole bottom left of your screen. Versus if I have that on, um, it only takes up like a tiny portion in the middle. But that's all personal preference, that's not something you really have to do. What I do recommend doing though, is when you start the game, I think you actually start with 30 FOB, like this, or something. And I'm not sure if you really noticed the difference right away, but this is a bit zoomed in. You can see a little bit less, and it just puts you to disadvantage sometimes, because you won't see enemies coming. So what you want to do is go into console by pressing your console button. Uh, press FOV underscore desired 90 and you'll have a more zoomed out game. Um, and that's basically all the in-game settings I would change. There's obviously more you can do, and if you want to look up how to optimize that, there's a lot of stuff on that. But the real uh, best way to optimize something like this is with Master Config. So you want to open up any web browser, right, and just search Master Config. It is with an M, just keep that in mind. Right now it's free, I don't think it should ever be paid, and if it is paid, don't, but just don't get it, it's not worth paying for. But you go to Master Config, and this is super useful because it basically lets you run the game uh, with just better performance. Because TF2 is a lot of different settings that have been added over the 14 years worth of updates. And Master Config basically gets rid of any extra stuff that you realistically won't need. Um, and like you don't even notice. I mean, you might notice it for me because I'm actually playing with medium low settings uh, purely just to get more FPS. A lot of people play with full low settings which actually makes the game just look worse. But yeah, so first you want to hit launch and this works on every operating system so don't feel, um, don't feel obliged to do something else. Um, but yeah, they got a couple settings so if you want just the highest settings, but just to get rid of like the extra stuff, you can do Ultra. Uh, most people that I've played with use Low, but they're also people who play in competitive. And Low, you can't really see from this screenshot, um, but it makes the game look like really primitive. Some people like how that looks, I'm personally not a fan, which is why I use Medium or Medium Low, um, because they basically leave most of most of the things that you need to see in this game will still be there, everything will still look really nice, but it gets rid of just about everything that is just super extra and like you really won't need. Uh, then there's also add-ons that they have. You can also make custom add-ons to change some of this stuff if you really care to, but the ones I use are, um, let's see, flat mouse, um, no tutorial, and that's actually it. There's more stuff you can do, but uh, that's that's all I really recommend getting. But you can obviously get any of this if you don't want any of this, but that's that's all for you. And but once you have this all uh, selected and you have the right thing here selected, you want to go down and go to the download. Yep, download medium preset and select add-ons. It won't say medium if you're not medium, so if I'm on ultra, select download ultra preset. Alright, so once you're there, you just hit download, and it'll start downloading to your files. Um, yeah, you want to allow it to download multiple files. So now, if I go to my downloads folder, uh, I will have some of the files it's giving me. You can see I have the medium preset and the flat mouse add-on. I guess I disabled the no tutorial one, or just didn't, yeah, I disabled it by mistake. So that's on me. Anyway, you'll have this. Uh, so then from there, you want to go into Steam itself. Alright, then the library. And you want to go to Team Fortress 2. Right click the game, hit properties. Uh, and then it'll pull up a little tab like this. Then you want to go to local files, browse. And it'll actually open up exactly where the... Oh, whoops, you don't want to close that. That was that's my fault. Uh, local files, browse, and it'll open up exactly where everything about Team Fortress 2 is stored. Uh, unless it decides to be super laggy all of a sudden. There we go. Um, and basically what we want to do 
and of your download folder open on the side and you'll be in this folder then you go to tf custom and just drag these into the custom folder your folder will have two other files in here by default uh, which you can delete there's they're not needed but you can also just leave them there they don't add a lot of space but you just drag these vpk files into here you have to then close the game and reopen the game and when you reopen it it will have applied everything and your game will just run a lot faster you can do a net underscore f1 to see any specific settings uh, I actually have an FPS cap of 200 for just personal reasons, I think. Or it's 190, I don't remember. Uh, it's been a while since I set that up. But yeah, so that's everything you want to do before you even get into playing the game. So now we're off to actually, you know, the different classes. So first things first, we have the scout. Um, by default, you have the scatter gun, the pistol, and the bat. Uh, so, the scout's pretty simple, he can double jump, he has the highest movement speed in the game, and he also normally has 125 health when he's not getting healed by a medic, but this is a medic bot, so he's gonna follow me to the end of the earth. Unless I lose him, and he decides to die. Um, but yeah, his scatter gun is basically just a shotgun, uh, you wanna go for meat shots, like, you wanna go like that. Uh, and his pistol is a long range weapon that you can use to kinda just hold down the mouse and spam out opponents, see like this, kind of spamming out the uh, engineer sentry, you can't do anything. Now obviously it's not all there is to scout and there's a lot of alternate playstyles, the, the way TF2 works, there's alternate playstyles based on what you have equipped and there's a lot of different weapons in this game as you can see, but ge uh, generally default stuff is perfectly fine and pretty much always the best way to go. Um, so that's really the scout. He has a pistol for long range. His melee will swing pretty fast, and you can hit enemies with that if you're out of ammo. But most of the time, you want to be running around, double jumping, and just being annoying and really mobile, and then shooting people with your scatter gun and using it like a shotgun, aiming for the center of their torso. Just can't get headshots or anything. So you want to get as many bullets into their torso as possible, which is the biggest area. So if you aim for the middle of their body, you'll do the most damage. Um, yeah. And next up is the soldier. And the soldier will have the rocket launcher, shotgun, and shovel. Um, the rocket launcher fires rockets, which are good for multiple reasons. First up, you can fire them directly at things to do 90 damage or like 100 damage basically from anywhere as long as you hit them. But second off, you can actually miss targets, and if you hit a floor near them, you'll do splash damage, which does reduce damage, but still a good amount. You can see I'm doing like 60 there, and this can hit multiple targets, which can be very, very useful. Uh, I want to get rid of this sentry, so just give me a sec on that. Normally it's not this hard to remove a sentry, it's just I've let him build up a lot of metal. But yeah, so he'll have that, he'll have his shotgun, which you can use for close range encounters, since if you fire a rocket close to yourself, you'll actually damage yourself quite a bit. You can see I'm doing around 70 to myself every time I do that. So if someone's close to you, you want to pull out your shotgun and shoot them. And there is actually a really more advanced thing you can do with rockets called rocket jumping, where basically you use the fact that you can shoot yourself to launch yourself in the air like that, to just get a bunch of height and go places. And there are weapons that reduce the damage to this rocket studio. So you want to be using those so that you actually live while rocket jumping. Very kind of useful to know. Um, yeah, so that's basically the soldier. He has a melee, but you really don't use that unless you're like out of ammo. Um, okay. Then next up is the Pyro. And he has pretty much the very similar to loadout. Uh, Soldier is 200 health and a really slow movement speed, by the way. That's the thing about him. Pyro is 175. And he has a flamethrower and a shotgun. So the shotgun you want to use against other Pyros, basically. Or just if your flamethrower won't cover the distance. Um, not you. But yeah, you can hold mouse 1 to just speed flames at people and it'll slowly burn them to death even when you're not firing. See, he actually burned to death, but I have corpses off because that's just an optimization I have on. 
Um, and you can also right click, and then whenever you right click, if there's a projectile right in front of you, like a rocket for example, you'll actually deflect that rocket into the enemy, and it'll also do a bit of extra damage, so you can just really completely shut down soldiers by right clicking and just sending the rockets back at them. Um, and that's really the basics of Pyro. Then you have the Demo Man, who has the grenade launcher, sticky bomb launcher, and a bottle. So Demo Man's kind of weird, because he basically has two primaries, um, and they work a little bit differently. So first you have the sticky bomb launcher, which when you hold, like press left click, it'll fire a little, it's, what it's, called, it's called a sticky bomb. And whenever you press right click, uh, you can have a maximum of eight of these out. You'll see if I place a ninth, it'll blow up the first one. Or if I right click, it blows up all of them at once. So this can be very useful. Say you know an enemy is going to come around this corner. You can put like three stickies here. That's generally enough to kill most people. Uh, and then if you right click, it, when they're like right here, it'll kill them. Uh, so that's what's known as a sticky trap. You can also do another thing called sticky spamming, which basically rolls around you just firing them and detonating them a bunch. This is also a very popular method to play Demo Man because they have a lot of splash damage similar to Silver Rockets. And then finally you have your grenade launcher, which fires in an arc. So you want to aim a bit higher. You can see I'm firing in an arc and not very close to that sentry. I see I fire in an arc to hit that sentry it's all the way down there. If I fire directly at it, it'll go way below it, although they will bounce. You can see they actually bounce a little bit, and then they still blow up at the end. But if you hit something directly, it'll do 100 damage. So like that, you kind of see it did 100. Although, unfortunately, the engineer is also there, so... Yeah, there you go, you can see it does exactly 100. Um, so basically you want to alternate between these two when the time comes. This is generally good for just kind of spamming down areas with a lot of enemies. So is the Sticky Bomb Launcher. And the Sticky Bomb Launcher is a bit better for close range. And if by some miracle you run out of all your ammo on both of those, the bottle, just like most melee weapons in this game, will do 65 damage on a hit. Um, although there are things called rain and crits in this game, which basically means uh, every now and then your weapons will randomly do a shit ton of damage for literally no reason. That's part of the fun of ZF2, it's just that, it's, like, that level of randomness. But every now and then if you hit an enemy with a melee weapon, it'll do 195. Uh, and melee weapons actually have increased random crits, which means they do that every 1 in 3, uh, which is quite a lot. So next up we have the heavy. That's, that's pretty much all it for the demo. This is, you have arcs, little things that do 100 on impact and do a good amount if there's just like a group of people. It can be a very useful thing to do, but so is the sticky bomb launcher, and you can kind of spam it a lot of the time. Although you should mainly be using it to kind of set traps around corners. So let's say I was an enemy, because you can also shoot yourself with these. Uh, if I was an enemy, I'd walk around the corner and you detonate. You'll see that would have, uh, that did a lot to me. Uh, I think you also take a little bit of reduced damage from your own stuff, so that would have probably killed an enemy, but just not me. You can see, if I put a sticky here, I can also use the fact that I can hit myself to go flying. It's called sticky jumping, and it can be very, very fun to do, and it's also very useful. Let's say you know there's like a sentry in there, and you want to fly past it. Well, you can do this, you go flying past it. Uh, and yeah, and then you can just kind of break his stuff. That. that was probably the worst way to do that, but whatever. Um, the yeah, end, that's basically it for Demo Man. Now I'm gonna go show you the basics of Heavy, and this is all the basics. You can obviously, there's a lot more intricacies to every class. Like, there's, uh, first off, there's a lot of intricate ways to sticky jump. Second off, there's a lot of intricate ways to rocket jump. And movement in this game in general has a lot of different intricacies in it. Uh, Heavy is the most basic of all the classes. He uses melees, which just like any other class, will do 65 on him. He has the same shotgun that every other, most other classes have. And the main thing he has is his minigun, which if you hold right click, will be revved, and then when the second you tap left click, it'll fire. Or if you hold left click without shooting, it'll take a sec, and then it'll start firing. And that's basically what he's known for. He has a, he has a pocket medic healing him. He has 300 base health, but when he's getting healed, he has 450, which is really hard to contest. And he basically just shoots his minigun at people and just kills them. Uh, that's that's really Heavy's whole gimmick. Just wa walks around. He has a really he has the slowest movement speed in the game. You run around, mow people down with your minigun, 
if somehow, this this is really hard to do, if you run out of ammo on your minigun, then you'll have your shotgun as a backup for those close range encounters, but even in close range, the minigun is always the better option, so you basically have you should almost exclusively be using your minigun unless you're doing something specific. Um, but yeah, that's really heavy, he's a really basic class. And then you have Engineer, who has the shotgun, pistol, and a wrench. Uh, and he also has a PDA, if you didn't notice. So the engineer is kind of weird um, in the fact that he builds buildings. So first off, you have the teleporters, which is the entrance and the exit. Uh, if you go through the teleporter entrance, uh, you will end up at the exit. Now, obviously, you don't want to put him like this. You want to put the entrance by spawn always, but the exit should be somewhere, let's say, like up there so that your teammates can actually go somewhere. I'm purely having it here for the sake of demonstration. See, if I step on it, it teleports me, and then it has to recharge. you see it's recharging. And once it goes all the way back to its full spin speed and it starts glowing blue, that means it's ready to be used again, and it'll be used. So it does that once every 10 seconds at level one. Both the, the cool part about Engineer is you can hit his buildings with this wrench. You see in the bottom right, I have 200 ammo. I can use that ammo to upgrade the buildings by hitting them with my wrench, and when you upgrade them, they're more efficient. So the teleporter, for example, will now teleport I think every 5 seconds, so you'll see it charges like 2 times the speed, and it's already back up and running, uh, even though it took so long last time, and you can get that all the way down I think 3 seconds at level 3. Don't quote me on that, I didn't look up those numbers and I can't remember them. Um, second off is his dispenser, which is one of the core mechanics of an engineer. Uh, the dispenser will dispense both a small amount of health and ammo in a continuous stream to anyone around it. Um, so, you'll see I have 113 ammo. I walk up to it, get 40 ammo uh, every time it dispenses it. But you'll also notice, if you look in the top left at your UI, uh, you'll see there's like a little wrench thing, which shows how upgrade the building is, and the little ammo thing above is how much ammo the dispenser has available to dispense. So you'll see if I use up all of my ammo, it still keeps giving me ammo as long as there's something in that bar. You see now there's nothing in that bar, it's not dispensing any ammo, but it will dispense a small amount of health. Unfortunately, I can't show this because this medic is just on me at all times. Let's see if I, I don't think I can really get rid of him, unfortunately, so this is going to be annoying for the tutorial. But you can upgrade this all the way to level 3, and you kind of want to have it upgraded. Now you don't just want to put this in the middle of nowhere, because if you just have it like here, like, it might help your team, but the enemies can also shoot it and destroy it, just like with any humans, they can shoot and destroy buildings. So you always want to have it a little bit around a corner, although this is the enemy spawn, uh, generally there's like the blue spawn, so you don't want to do that. But let's say it was on red team, um, if I have it here, they can't shoot it until they get around this corner, but my, my teammates can stand nearby like this, and they can shoot around the corner while still getting healed and getting ammo. And that's generally kind of how you want to place your dispenser, is in a way that it won't get destroyed. So like for example, right here in this corner, it won't get destroyed the second someone comes through this door, but once they get through, they can shoot it, but your teammates can stand here, shoot through this door, get healed, and just keep shooting through this door. So you want to place it in a way that it helps your teammates, but can't get shot by the enemy. And the final thing the engineer has is his sentry. Now, this weapon is really, really strong. Uh, it shoots pretty slow at first. Let me actually equip. There's something called the Wrangler, which lets you control your sentry, so I can kind of showcase uh, the, the sentry gun a bit more. But when you initially shoot it, it'll do like 8 damage per bullet, and it shoots relatively fast. You can see it's firing like 3 bullets a second or something. You can kind of, you can see this thing shooting, you can see its bullets. Uh, and it automatically shoots at enemies so you don't have to aim it, which is a very cool thing about the Sentry. Uh, but once you make it level 2, uh, it's a lot more powerful. It gets a second gun and shoots a lot faster. Both here and C, it shoots a shit ton faster. And I think the bullets do increase damage, might be wrong on that, but basically the gun almost like, it gets like 2.5 times its damage, which can be very useful, and it'll automatically shoot at enemies, like you might have seen at the start. Um, and yeah, and then we, when you get it to level 3, uh, which I don't know if I do in time, it'll start shooting rockets, which don't actually add a lot to its damage, um, but it's a, it's a nice kind of extra bit of damage that can finish off some enemies that wouldn't have died otherwise see it also starts firing rockets um, 
Yeah. That's the real basics of the engineer's buildings, but he's a very complex class, and placing these buildings and everything takes a lot of time and practice, and it takes a lot to get down, so if you want to learn more about engineer, I recommend going on YouTube, finding this guy called Uncle Dane, he does a bunch of really great tutorials in engineer, so he's probably the guy you want to watch for that. Um, and yeah, that's basically the engineer. Um, there are obviously unlocks, but I'm not going over those, since that's not really a concern for you right now, and you'll just get to see what those do over time. So then there's the medic, which is really straightforward. He has his medigun, syringe gun, and bone saw. Um, the second you unlock any of these items that you want to use them, um, the Crusader's crossbow will heal, heal people when you shoot them with it. It'll also damage enemies. Uh, let me actually showcase it real quick. Fires a little like bolt like that. And if that hits enemies, it heals them. If it hits uh, teammates, it heals them. Very, it's basically the only primary you ever want to use on medic, but by default you won't have it. And the bone saw, uh, the reason you want to use the uber saw as the melee weapon is because every time you hit the enemy, you get 25% of your uber, which I'll go over real quick. So first off, let's let's go back to the default loadout because this is what you'll be running. You'll have the syringe gun. It literally just does damage. Uh, very pitiful amounts of damage. It fires in an arc. It does like three damage per thing that hits. Generally not that good. The bone saw is your standard melee. It'll do 65 damage on a hit, uh, or if it crits, it's 195. But when you heal people as medic, first off you overheal them a little bit if they're at full health uh, with the medi gun. It's basically all you want to use as medic is the medi gun. You'll notice uh, you can heal them over, like the Engineer only has 125 health, um, actually 150 health, but by overhealing him, by just healing him in general, uh, he goes up to 185 health, which is a lot more. Um, you also have a small amount of passive regen, so if I take damage, like, I need this guy to shoot me or something. Uh, give me a sec to get around to him. I get like the enemy here to shoot me. This is an easy AI, so it might take a second for him to get it down. Um, but basically, what you saw, I slowly regen a bit of my health. I think I can take full damage. From oh, here we go. Take your shots. We're down. But yeah, the medic passively regens like 3 health a second, which can be very nice, because that means if you're taking damage, rather than having to run directly for like a health pack or an ammo pack, you can kind of just run away, and you'll slowly start regening your health anyway, and by the time you get out of danger, you'll be back to full health. But you'll also notice in the bottom right, whenever I'm healing people, uh, this little meter charges, and that's what's called the uber meter, just uber charge, for uh, what most people call it. And once you have that, when you right-click the person you're healing, you'll automatically make them invulnerable for a few seconds. So this will take a little bit to charge, so, just have to wait for that. Alright, so now you'll see, uh, after that cut, I now have Uber. Um, so if I right-click this engineer, he'll kind of play, have some little particles, and if the enemy was shooting at him, he wouldn't take any damage, uh, as long as the Uber meter is going down. And just like that, we're now out of Uber, and he's no longer invincible, and he's just getting healed by me. Um, so yeah, that's really the basics of Medic. And uh, now off to the next class, which is Sniper. So, Sniper is a really, really basic class. A very hard class, don't get me wrong on that. But he's very basic in what he does. So, first things first. Um, when you right-click with your primary to the Sniper Rifle, it'll zoom in. Um, and you'll notice a little meter going up. This is how much... Uh, this is like the body shot meter, I guess, or just the charge meter in general. Your shots will do more damage the more this is charged, and at full charge, it'll do 150 damage to a body, or 450 damage to a head. But Sniper's main gimmick is you want to hit headshots with them, so if I shoot this engineer in the head, even with zero charge, I will do 150. If I shoot him in the body, I will do 50. So if I actually hit him, see that happen. Uh, I'm not very good at Sniper though, so that might take a second. Or you could also no-scope to do the same as a body shot. I also don't like how the AI yeah, just runs away. Generally, you want to just kind of keep your distance. You also have the SMG as a secondary, which is just a decent weapon for spamming down lower health enemies at close range. Um, let me just fly over to him, kind of show this stuff on this medic. 
right? If I had shot the medic, uh, that was a body shot, you'll see, because it had 50. I really don't like the AI. It's like this. There you go. You see, it's a critical hit. It did 150. And that's because I headshot the medic there. Um, as long as you headshot an enemy, it'll do 150 at the minimum. And if you charge it up a bit, it'll do a good amount more. It goes all the way up to 450 damage for a fully charged headshot. But it'll only do 50 to the body. So if you, if you actually had died there, I could have no scoped and done 50 to him. Uh, your melee works just like anyone else's. Just 65 on a basic hit, 195 for ram crit. Um, and then the SMG, yeah, like I said, just spam down people close range. Generally, Sniper is a really skill-based class. Uh, you need to hit heads to actually be efficient. And whenever you hit a headshot, it does 150 damage. And most classes don't even have that much health. Like the Sniper himself has 125. So you normally one-shot them just for that, or if they're even slightly damaged. For example, Soldier's 200, so if he takes 50 damage, you can headshot him, do it 150, and kill him. Or if you just charge like a tiny bit, like up to here, you could have headshot him there, and that would have killed the Soldier. And that's all there really is to Sniper. And now on to Spy. So Spy also has a really uh, basic loadout, uh, but he's a lot more complex of a class, and he also requires a good amount of skill to get down. So first you have his revolver, right? So if you look at his loadout, you have his revolver, knife, invis watch, and sapper. These all do completely different things. So his revolver, uh, you just kind of shoot, just like a normal weapon. It has a good amount of just random spread to it. Um, his invis watch lets you go invisible, and both buildings and enemies won't see you while you're invisible, but you'll run out of charge even standing still, which you can actually replenish with ammo. So if you get near both a friendly or an enemy dispenser, which unfortunately the enemy doesn't have, you can recharge that charge. But once you run out, it'll automatically decloak, and it'll decloak on its own. Um, and just remember, you activate that with right click, if I didn't say that already. Um, and then you have his knife, which will one-shot people uh, if you backstab them. So if I was behind an enemy, uh, it'll little, it'll show a little animation. If I left-click, it'll backstab them. So if I was behind the enemy NG like this, it would backstab, which always one-shots. It does like 5,000 damage or something, which is a guaranteed one-shot. And you'll see if I press 4, or if I just scroll to it, I'll have a little disguise menu. And this lets me disguise as enemies. And two enemy players, I'll look like I do in the bottom left. I'll look like a demo man with his grenade launcher out. If you hold out a different weapon and press B, your disguise will switch to that, which can be very useful. But you'll see this little animation. If I click, it one-shots him, but then the sentry sees me. And the sapper is the final thing. If you left click with it, it'll slowly destroy buildings, which the engineer can remove these sappers by, by hitting with the wrench, but it takes like two swings. So if you start at this point, it would have broke it. And you can just hit, put those dispenser, uh, sappers down. You have an unlimited amount, by the way. You just put it down those uh, sappers, and they will just destroy the buildings for you, and you can kind of run away, or you could kill the engineer or something. And another very important thing to know is when you're disguised as an enemy, uh, their sentries will not shoot at you, so if there's like a sentry on the corner or something, you want to be disguised uh, so they won't shoot at you. And generally newer players won't shoot at disguised players, but uh, their kind of specific movement will become really apparent uh, the more you play. I don't really know how to describe it though. And uh, yeah, that's really the basics of all the classes in Team Fortress 2. I hope you guys learned at least a little bit. And I mainly hope that you guys learned uh, how to, you know, how to how to set up the game so it runs smoother. Um, yeah, that's basically all there is to the gameplay. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.